Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at previously used CPA questions. Those were used by the AI CPA on the actual CPA exam. This means those are the real deal. Those are actual questions. Now in the future, they may appear word for word or they may appear differently, but I can assure you the concept and the way they test you will appear again on the exam. And this is the regulation exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including many hundreds of CPA questions. On my website, you will find additional information about my lectures, such as PowerPoint slides, notes, true, false, multiple choice. If you're studying for the CPA exam, 2,000 plus CPA questions. So let's take a look in, at this first question. As I always, I would mention what on my lectures, on which chapter and course you will find the information. And notice this question is an auditing and attestation. And you might be saying, what does auditing and attestation has to do with the regulation section? Well, when it comes to audit, uh, the, the, the uh, tax preparer, this, the CPA liability, well, you would learn about CPA professional liability and auditing as well. So that's why this topic is covered in auditing. So let's take a look at the first question. If a CPA recklessly depart from the standard of due care when conducting an audit, the CPA will be liable to third party who are unknown to the CPA under what law? Now, you have to understand those laws. In other words, when you walk into the exam, you have to know under which law the CPA is liable. And I'm going to show you when I when I uh, when I cover this on my uh, on my YouTube. So this is only one screenshot from a you know six minute and twenty eight second session. Just real quick, three level under the law, an accountant will be here. We're talking about auditors, but here we're talking about the CPA misconduct. Okay, first is you could be under ordinary negligence. You could have gross negligence, or you could have fraud. First, first of all, you need to understand what's the difference between one and two, and three, which is fraud. One and two don't have an intent. Three, you have an intent. So that's the first thing. For to have to 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 be liable under ordinary negligence, yeah, you just simply have to failure to exercise a reasonable level of care that caused the damage. So you did not perform due care. You did not do your job as you're supposed to do. You were careless, but again, you have no intent to to deceive. If your misconduct is considered gross neg negligence, then failure to exercise even the minimal level of care. So it's not only you didn't do the reasonable level of care, even the minimum. You were reckless. You had reckless disregard. So really, really reckless here. Okay. To be under gross negligence. And the key word is reckless. And again, there's no intent. There's no intent. And fraud. Well, guess what? Fraud, you have various factors for fraud. First, there, there should be a material misrepresentation, okay? It means you misrepresented a serious amount of money. That's what material misrepresentation is, material misrepresentation. Two, you had the intent. Intent here is sinister. You act with intent, act with sinister. You have to have this. Also, also the plaintiff has have to justify that they relied on you. So there's a justification. The plaintiff must prove so they must prove they did they did and they must prove damages which is damages easy to 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 show so you must prove four things there was material misrepresentation one damages two if you want to take those don't take those notes three the the plaintiff must prove and act with sinister as intent you have to show that there was an intent those are the four elements of fraud four elements of fraud so have a look at those Big picture, we can go back and try to answer the question. Let's let me clear from the notes here because I have a lot of notes now. So if you are giving this question and you see the word reckless, recklessly depart from due care, I would say, if you remember, you, you are reckless. It's really, it's not good. You are really negligent, okay? So it cannot be negligent because negligent is, you know, like a minor infraction. When it comes to reckless, again, the word that comes with it is gross negligence, gross negligence. So once you see the word reckless, and remember, let me show you, when we talked about gross negligence, we say you were reckless disregard. So reckless and gross negligence, they go together. And basically, you have to memorize those. You have to know, you have to know those rules because you can answer a lot of easy questions and get some easy points out of the way by remembering those rules. 
Okay, which of the following defenses is likely to be successful in a suit alleging negligence? Again, here, what, what they're asking you is, the CPA is being sued for negligence. Well, let's see what happened. You're negligent if you did not exercise level of care, you know, the minimum level of care, basically, or, or some sort of a level of care, like, but you were careless, basically. Okay, so what defense you will have if you are accused of being careless? Well, guess what? If I'm be if I'm accused of being careless, my defense is, I did my job, I performed due care. That's what I did. I did my job. Okay, intent is not an issue. Lack of mental capacity is not an issue. Ign ignorance of the law. Well, stupidity is never a defense, so you cannot say I was ignorant. So that's definitely out. So all what you can do is, if you are if you are being sued for negligence, what they're trying to say is you did not perform your job, and you'd say no, I did. I performed my job in a professional due care. I did my job. That's all what you have to do. And if you can prove this, then you're no longer negligence. Okay, you're negligent. Okay. Number three. Which of the following pairs of element must a client prove to prove account accountant liable for common law fraud? Now here we're talking about fraud. Remember the four the four rules of fraud. You have to have the intent, which is sinister. You have to show the damages, intent to deceive, and material uh, rep misrepresentation for that matter. Let's look at one. A, I'm sorry, A. Material misrepresentation, that's good. Breach of contract, that's not. We did not talk about breach of contract with fraud. Okay, it, you don't. It doesn't have to be there. So A is out because breach of contract is not an element of fraud. Freedom from contributory negligence and loss. So you did not contribute to the neg negligence and loss. Those are not elements of fraud. That's out too. C, sinister, which is intent to commit fraud. Yes, and justifiable reliance. Yes, the client has to prove that they justify that they that they relied on whatever you are providing them, the financial statements for that matter, they relied and they incurred the loss. Okay, that's the third element, which it's not here, but definitely intent, which is sinister and justifiable reliance are pairs of elements. So this looks like a good answer, but let's look at D. Intent, well, this is good. To deceive, well, that's the same thing as sinister and privity. You don't have to prove privity. You don't have to be, um, you don't have to have a contract with the with the CPA. Okay, so any third party can sue under fraud so c is the is the answer again those questions if you notice they're kind of they're from auditing and attestation and sometimes you would learn them under business law because i don't really teach business law i'm not a lawyer and i haven't tried to teach business law yet but the point is you have to know those rules okay and luckily i do cover it in auditing and attestation so you have to be very familiar and comfortable so you can answer these easy questions easy points okay to which of the following parties will the CPA be liable if the CPA fraudulently, we have fraud here, issued an unqualified opinion on a corporation's materially misstated financial statements? Now you're committing a fraud. They're telling you there's a fraud. The question is, who can sue you if you commit a fraud? And guess what? The short answer is anyone. Okay? So who can sue you? Corporate shareholders can sue you because they're owners. Corporate bondholders, they can sue you. They are also um, they are also affected. So A is the answer, both shareholders and bondholders. Once again, what do they have to prove? They have to prove that you have the intent to deceive, which is the hardest to prove. You know, you, you, you intentionally try to deceive them. They have to prove that they justifiably relied on your on your statement. Well, that's not too bad. They can easily kind of uh, uh, show this, you know, they gave you the loan, they justify on the statement, they have to show damages, that's easy if they lost money. And it has to be material, material that's, they already told us here, materially misstated, so it's it's easy, okay? Number five, which of the following transaction co co correctly illustrate the doctrine of substantial performance? What is substantial performance? It means, did you do your job fully all the way till the end? This is basically what it is. And uh, this is mo more like business law concept rather than an accounting concept. So it's like a business law concept. Okay. So did you do your job all the way till the end? The illustrate the doctrine of substantial substantial performance. Okay. A. Blair ordered a dozen of blue chairs from Kyle. Kyle delivered a dozen of red chairs. dozen red chairs. Well, 
well, th this is a substantial performance. Well, you did send me 12 chairs, but it's not m my 12 chairs. So you, re you did not really substantially perform because those are, those are not the chairs that I ordered. So here what we have is a breach, basically in a sort of breach of contract, you did not really conform to the contract because I want 12 blue chairs. So you did not really substantially perform what you're supposed to perform. So A is out. Leslie painted an entire room, but failed to put an electric, electrical outlet covers back on. Well, I hope, I hope you know what, what electrical outlets are. Basically, when you're painting, you remove the, uh, the electrical outlet so you can paint. So no, no paint, no paint is, is, uh, uh, no paint is painted on those electric outlet because you're trying to paint in corners. So basically you, you painted, but this is basically, I would say a small, a minor issue in my opinion, a material issue. I would say B is a good candidate because uh, you could either put those, basically you need two screws, you could put those back on, or you may ask the, the painter to come back and put them. But look, B looks like you substantially perform, but let's hold on that, okay? A contract C, a contract required hairstyling to be done to Toby's satisfaction, but Toby, in good faith, dissatisfied with the completed result. Well, guess what? If you're not satisfied, they did not really perform. And they're saying here, you didn't, you're, you're not trying to commit any fraud. Toby was in good faith. So that's not substantial performance. A dentist competently completed the extraction of Lee's tooth, but mistakenly pulled the wrong one. Yike. Did they substantially perform? Can the dentist said, look, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm supposed to pull the teeth out and I did pull your teeth and that's it. We're done. Although it's the wrong one. They can't say that. They can't say that. Okay, <laughs> they're, they're going to be in trouble big time. Okay, so D is out. So as we expected, B is the right answer. I'm not really a handy person. I can tell you, I can put electrical outlet back on. Okay, so it's not, but it's not bad. You can do it. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. So in the next session, as always, I will work additional qu CPA questions. I'm going to remind you to visit my website. On my website, you will find additional resources if you're studying for your CPA exam, including hundreds of CPA questions, lectures, notes, PowerPoint slides. You're going to study for your CPA once. Do it properly. Subscribe. It's an investment in your career. Move on with your life. Good luck.